Welcome to part 3 of this video series looking at basic registration workflow inside Leica Cycling. You can download the Cycling database used in this video series by clicking on the link in the video description. In this part we're going to talk about cloud-based registration. Registration is the process by which multiple scans are joined together and we've already covered target-based registration in a previous video. Certain environments, such as scanning inside a building, are ideal for cloud-based registration. This is due to having surfaces that are very stable and having readily identifiable planes. So here we can see we've got data on the floor and we've got data on this wall and this back wall here. Um, having insufficient overlapping data in any of these primary directions can result in slippage in the alignment and produce a poor result. So just to make that clear, we will look at this image of a room and you can see that if we were to scan here, we would record data on planes in the X, Y and Z directions. By way of contrast, a tunnel or linear hallway with repeating features is often an unsuitable environment for cloud-based registration. In this graphic, you can see how slippage would occur as there would be no detail to lock you in the Y axis. In these environments, target-based registration is recommended. In our previous video tutorials, we were looking at scans carried out outside the church. These are unsuited to cloud registration due to the trees and bushes that will have moved around very slightly in the wind from one scan to the next. So the stability of the environment is key to getting a good cloud registration. For example, on a recent project scanning inside a power station, vibration from machinery meant cloud registration was unsuitable. The software just doesn't know that the objects in the data may be moving slightly. Had cloud registration been used, the scans may have been slightly misaligned, and once a number of scans have been registered, propagation of error might have resulted in a bad registration. The solution in this case was to place targets on solid structural beams that weren't vibrating. In the case of this church scan data, it is still possible to use cloud-based registration, but one would have to remove the trees and bushes from the data prior to running the cloud alignment and we will look at doing that in a subsequent video. So we're now going to open up one of the scans carried out inside the church and we're going to cloud register it to the adjacent scan. Now the adjacent scan was carried out just next to this speaker and we'll have a quick look at that scan as well. So we can see we're now adjacent to the speaker so there's going to be a lot of nice overlap between the two scans for us to use in our cloud registration. So if I create a registration and then open that, we can add those two scan wells. So first we're going to look at visual registration. So we're going to go to visual registration, visual alignment. Zoom in here. So the controls here are same, same as in Cyclone's model space. Um, at the moment we're locked into a 2D view. We can click that button and then we're free to navigate. This, this can be useful in understanding how the two scans align. Uh, but when you when you do your cloud alignment, you do need to be in the in the preset view. Okay, so we're just going to rotate the point cloud so it lines up. And then we're just going to move it into position, and that's a pretty good fit. So we will now view the data in the elevation view. So viewpoint elevation view. Just rotate around a bit. You can see it's pretty well lined up already but just move the point cloud up and down till you get a good visual alignment and that looks good and so we'll just go back to the top view everything looks great and we'll optimize that constraint so we can see that our histogram is looking good uh, all the data's nicely on the, on the bell-shaped curves there uh, here we've got error and a number of points on our various axes. Um, uh, there's nothing like 0.1 error, it's more like 6 mil. Um, and we'll just click OK to this message. So 
here's our cloud alignment result. We have a root mean squared error of 7 millimeters, which is very good. Um, so RMS is the root mean square error of the alignment. If the RMS value is in the one centimeter range, um, the alignment is likely to be good. And we can see that the average error is four mil. And also we can see how many points have been used uh, in the overlap. And we have a status here that says aligned. So sometimes if you have a poor overlap, Cyclone will tell you that it's under constrained. Um, we are also asked if we want to merge scanwell groups. We'll come on to scanwell groups in a subsequent uh, video tutorial, but for now we're just going to say no to that message. So now we're going to look at uh, adding in another scan. So we'll add in scanwell 11. And we're going to look at a different method of cloud alignment. So for this one, we're going to swap to the model spaces tab and we're going to load scanwell 10 and we're going to load scanwell 11. And um, I'm just going to drag this up a little bit, so it's a bit clearer. And so the way this three-point PIC registration works is, if we just zoom out, we have to identify three common points in both scans. So um, it's a more manual method, perhaps, than the uh, visual alignment. Um, so yeah let's get started so uh, this is the same corner in both scans so we used a multi-pick tool to pick one point and then just have to identify two other areas there's another corner let's use that This gives Cyclone the initial hints it needs to do the cloud registration. And then when we've picked our three points, we just right click and we say cloud constraint, add cloud constraint. Now it didn't like that, it only matched two points. So let's go back and add in another one. Perhaps I wasn't accurate enough with my picks. Let me try that. This time it's worked. And we now have a, a link between station 10 and 11 that is not aligned. So we'll right click on that and say Cloud Constraint Optimize. Again, we've got a nice histogram appearing here. And we get this uh, warning to say that, that it's reached a limit of iterations. Just click OK to that. Um, this one is even better than the last one. And so we've got a root mean squared error of 6 mil. Uh, which is really, really good because uh, for the C10 that was used on this, uh, I think it has a, an RMS value of 6 mil in general. Uh, so we'll accept that and register that data. And then um, if we want to verify our registration, we can view the interim results as we have done in previous Samples, and we can cut the section and independently colorize the scans by going to Tools, Scanner, Scan Mode Explorer. If we go to the top down view, yeah, we can see that we've got a nice tight registration. So uh, we have our links now between uh, ScanMod 9 and ScanMod 10, but we don't have a link between ScanMod 11 and ScanMod 9. If we wanted to create that link, uh, we can. We can go to Cloud Constraint, Auto Add Cloud Constraints, and it will automatically add in the extra 
cloud alignment. So yeah, and again we've got a root mean squared error of seven mil, and um, we can hit register. So we'll just wrap up this video by saying that you can of course use targets as well as cloud constraints in your registration work. Um, quite often a good workflow is to complete a project by registering as targets and then maybe tighten up the registration with cloud constraints. We already touched on earlier the uh, stability of the environment being a uh, key to getting a good cloud registration. Um, so the, the major factor determining the effectiveness of a cloud constraint is the number of overlapping points between scans. The higher the number of points that are sampled off of overlapping surfaces, the better the registration will be. A common mistake uh, when people are scanning inside buildings is to go from one room to the next room and then through the doorway uh, you, you have a very narrow field of view into the next room so a good trick is always to do a scan right in the middle of the doorway so that you have good overlap between the two rooms um, so that concludes this video uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next one if you found this video useful please don't forget to hit like share and subscribe Thank you for watching.